In this second video on points of inflection, I'm going to be working through the example you see here, and I'll be finding this function's points of inflection. And although I'm going to start by drawing this function's curve, I'm going to be assuming throughout this video that we don't have access to a graphical calculator. And so to check that the points we find are indeed points of inflection, we're going to be studying the sign of this function's second derivative, and we'll be doing that using a sign table. So let's get started. So let's see, we're given f of x, which equals to x to the power of 4 minus 2x cubed minus 12x squared plus 12x, and we're told to find the coordinates of any points of inflection along the curve y equals to f of x. Well, as I often do, I'll write s o l here, as in solution, and now we can get started. First of all, if we had access to a graphical calculator and plotted this function's curve, it would look something like this. There we go. Now, looking at this curve as we go from left to right, it definitely seems like it has two points of inflection. Indeed, we can see here that the curve is initially concave up, and somewhere around here it changes concavity to become a concave down curve. Then carrying on, we can see that as we move further to the right, it changes concavity again somewhere around here to become a concave up curve again. So from this sketch alone, it looks like there's a point of inflection somewhere here, and another one which I'll draw roughly here. And in fact, if we had our graphical calculator, then we'd be able to find the x-coordinates of these points of inflection using it. Here, though, I'm assuming that we don't have access to a calculator, and that we have to find this function's points of inflection by hand. And so here are three steps we can always use to find any curve's points of inflection. The first thing we need to do, step one, is to find this function's second derivative. And for that, I need to differentiate this function twice. So let's go ahead. I'll have f dash, or f prime of x, which will be equal to 4x cubed minus 6x squared minus 24x plus 12. And then differentiating again, I'll have f dash dash, or f double prime of x, equals to 12x squared minus 12x minus 24. And that's the first step done. We now have this function's second derivative. So I move on to step two. And in step two, I need to find any values of x at which this second derivative equals to zero. And that's because, as we've seen, at a point of inflection, the second derivative is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and solve f dash dash of x equals to zero, which leads to solving 12x squared minus 12x minus 24 equals to zero. And we can see here that we're dealing with a quadratic equation for which every single term has a common factor of 12. And so I'll write that at the front here. I'll write 12 times in parentheses x squared minus x minus 2 equals to 0. Now, looking at the quadratic I have inside this pair of parentheses, it doesn't take too long to see that we can factor this. Indeed, if I look for two numbers which add up to negative 1 and whose product is negative 2, we quickly find that negative 2 and 1 do the trick. And so using those two values, I can write this in factored form as 12 times x plus 1 times x minus 2, and that's equal to 0. Now that we've written this quadratic in factored form, we can quickly solve this equation. Indeed, the only way this product will equal to 0 is if either x plus 1 equals to 0, which would mean x equals to negative 1, or if x minus 2 equals to 0, which would mean x equals to 2. Done. And so the two values of x at which the second derivative equals to 0 are x equals to negative 1 and x equals to 2. And at a first glance, one may think that the job is done. Indeed, we found two values of x at which the second derivative equals to 0, so we found the points of inflection. But it's important to remember the definition of a point of inflection. Remember, a point of inflection is a point at which the second derivative equals to zero, and it is a point across which the second derivative changes sign. Looking back at the sketch I made at the beginning here, as we go from left to right, we can see that the curve is initially concave up, which means that the second derivative must be positive. Then it passes this point, the point of inflection, and turns into a concave down curve, which tells us that the second derivative must be negative. Carrying on to the right, the curve then reaches a second point of inflection here, and as it crosses it, it turns into a concave up curve again. So the second derivative must be positive there. So the curve we have here definitely confirms that we are indeed dealing with points of inflection, 
But remember, I'm assuming in this video that we don't have access to a graphical calculator, and that we need to prove that these values of x do indeed correspond to points of inflection. And for that purpose, we move on to step 3. Now in step 3, we need to study the sign of the second derivative on either side of these values of x. And I'll do that here with a sign table. And to construct that sign table, we're going to use the fully factored form of our function's second derivative. In other words, I'm going to consider f dash dash of x, or f double prime of x, equals to 12 times x plus 1 times x minus 2. And now I construct a sign table. And here's how. I start by making a tall table, like this. And at the very top of that, I'm going to create a row. And the top row we have here is used to indicate the domain of the function whose sign we're studying. So in this case, the domain of the second derivative. Now this is a polynomial function and is perfectly well defined for all real numbers. And so to indicate that, I'll write that x can take on all the values from negative infinity up to positive infinity. Next, I add a row to my table for each of the factors I have in the function's fully factored form. So those would be 12, x plus 1, and x minus 2. So I'll have 12, x plus 1, and x minus 2. And I create the rows. Next, and this is important, I add to the top row here any values of x at which the function we're studying, so that's the second derivative here, equals to 0. And we found those values of x in step 2. Those were negative 1 and 2. And so I'll say that negative 1 is right here, and 2 is there. Directly underneath those two values, I draw vertical lines all the way down to the bottom of my table, thereby creating these three columns inside my sign table. Okay, now we're ready to study the sign of each of these three factors. And here's the idea. The first factor we have here is 12. And regardless of what value x takes on, 12 will always be positive. And I show that by writing a plus sign in each of the cells in that row. Next, we have the factor x plus 1. Now, x plus 1 will be equal to 0 if x equals to negative 1. And I show that by writing a 0 on this vertical line here. Now, to fill in this cell, I need to consider the sign of x plus 1 for x values less than negative 1. And it doesn't take too long to see that if I replace x by anything less than negative 1, x plus 1 will be negative. Indeed, say I take x equals to negative 2, then this would be negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. So that's negative. And so I write a negative symbol there. On the other hand, for any x value greater than negative 1, x plus 1 will be positive. And I show that by writing a positive symbol and another one right here. Next, for the third factor, we have x minus 2. And x minus 2 will be equal to 0 if x equals to 2. So I write my 0 right here. Furthermore, for any x value less than 2, so for these two cells here, x minus 2 will be negative. And so I write that with a negative and a negative here. On the other hand, for x values greater than 2, x minus 2 will be positive. And so I write a positive symbol here. Done. At this stage, we've studied the sign of each of the three factors of our second derivative. And so to complete this table, I add one more row at the bottom here, which I separate with like a double line here, like this. And this last row will be for the sign of the second derivative, f dash dash of x. And I can see here I can erase a bit of that. There we go. Now, first of all, the second derivative, f dash dash of x, will be equal to 0 if either one of its factors equals to 0. And so that would be when x equals to negative 1 and when x equals to 2. Next, to write the sign of the second derivative in each of these cells, I consider the product of the signs I see above. So, for instance, for this first cell, the second derivative will be positive times negative times negative. And since a negative times a negative is positive, this turns into a positive. Next, for this second cell, that's for x values between negative 1 and 2, we can see that the second derivative will be positive times positive times negative, which will be negative. And finally, for x values greater than 2, the second derivative will be positive times positive times positive, which is positive. And we're done. Remember, as soon as you have an even number of negative numbers being multiplied together, it turns into a positive. On the other hand, as soon as you have an odd number of negatives, it turns into something negative. Now, what this last row inside this table tells us is the sign of the second derivative as x goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And most importantly to us right now, 
This last row clearly shows us that the second derivative changes sign on either side of x equals to negative 1, as well as on either side of x equals to 2. Indeed, we can see quite clearly that as x goes from negative infinity to negative 1, the second derivative is positive, which is confirmed by the fact that the curve is concave up here. It then reaches a point of inflection when x equals to negative 1, so that would be this point right here, and then the second derivative is negative, and so the curve is concave down. At 2, it reaches a new point of inflection, so that's this point of inflection on our graph, and then the second derivative is positive, and so the curve is concave up again. And so the fact that we found two values of x at which the second derivative equals to 0, and we've shown that the second derivative changes sign on either side of those values of x, is solid proof that our function has two points of inflection, one whose x-coordinate is negative 1, and the other whose x-coordinate is 2. And of course, to find the y-coordinates of these two points of inflection, all we have to do is replace x inside our function by negative 1, and then by 2. So let's quickly do that here. For x equals to negative 1, we'll have f of negative 1 equals to negative 1 raised to the power of 4, minus 2 times negative 1 cubed, minus 12 times negative 1 squared, plus 12 times negative 1. And I'll just quickly fast forward through my working here. And so we can see here that when x equals to negative 1, I get a y-coordinate of negative 21. And I'll quickly do the same for when x equals to 2. I'll have f of 2 equals to 2 to the power of 4, minus 2 times 2 cubed, minus 12 times 2 squared, plus 12 times 2. And again, I'll fast forward through my working here. And there we go, when x equals to 2, the y-coordinate will be negative 24. And so in fact, we can label our points of inflection on our sketch here, which clearly isn't drawn to scale, but that first point of inflection has coordinates negative 1, negative 21, and the second one we have here has coordinates 2, negative 24. And there we go, that's how we can find points of inflection along a curve's length using the second derivative. And that's it for this tutorial.